I'm going live. Right now. That's fine. We are going live. Uh, let me just make sure this is working and that it's not live streaming to my personal page like it did last time. Oops. There we are. We're just about, we're popping up now. So that's good. So give everyone a minute or two to uh, log in here. Got Bobby on the other end is going to be filtering in the questions. Give it a bit of Attention a to the man behind the curtain. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Not that button, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hi, folks. All right. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome back. I don't know why, but I want my machine logged out and logged me back in. I was just like, not that button. No, no not that one. So, uh, the one next to the big red button. Yeah, exactly. I think I hit the big <laughs> green button by accident. Anyways, um, I think we're about ready to start. It's two minutes after seven. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're here for a our monthly repeat live. Uh, I've got a well, four of us here today. We got Bill, uh, just in the bottom corner. Bill Snyder, Jeremy uh, Fleming. This is his first time in a big yep. uh, Vita live event. You can ask him anything about videos. Yes, of course. But nothing else. Yes, yeah, so we're going to give you all the interesting questions that you have. No <laughs> yeah, skill stuff. We can handle that. And of course, we got uh, Matt Gentry in the uh, in the other corner there. So, uh, welcome to the latest Repeat Live event. Uh, we've got a couple of new announcements that we're going to be talking about today. If you didn't get the newsletter that went out around uh, 4.35 o'clock, we've got a new HO tooling announcement. We've got a new N-Scale tooling announcement. Uh, we've got a bunch of order deadlines that are coming up this Monday. And we've also announced all of the December order deadlines. Uh, so we're going to be going over all of that today. Uh, keep sending your questions in as well. We've got Bobby on the other end there. He's kind of filtering all the questions through Skype to me. So we'll We'll, uh, we'll go through some of the more interesting ones and we will, uh, we'll be answering them through the night. So uh, we'll see how far we go here. Um, let's, uh, let's get started with the uh, first announcement and I will bring this up on the screen and uh, we will get Bill to talk about it. Just uh, we want to see what Jeremy talked about. This is right up this time. Actually, yes. Uh, I think this would actually be most appropriate for Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> they're very common and very. Uh, right now, aren't they? You see them in Barry every day? Yeah, the mid-90s when they started to uh, appear. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The yeah. 18? No. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's the uh, the one that was on your screen in the D10 video. Could be. Could be. <laughs> you know, and, and, it, and it's amazing how few people commented on that. I got, I got a couple emails. One comment I saw on YouTube. Yeah. Yep. And I got, I got an email from my friend, Marty McGurk, who says, what are you coming out with the outside brace box cars? Oh, so somebody did notice. Yeah, so this is a uh, new HO scale box car that uh, we've developed and uh, is ready to go into tooling. Um, Southern Pacific, it's the B50-15 and 16 box cars. And the primary difference between the two being the uh, the ends on the cars. The uh, 5015 had these corrugated ends and the 5016 had the earlier dreadnought ends, which uh, came out after this. Um, so with just a pair of ends, we get a couple different groups of cars. And the, the fun thing with that is we get some, some additional, some really neat paint schemes on it. Um, and again, just because we can't do anything simply, we're doing two different grooves and two different sets of sides and two styles of brake gear. So um, these cars were originally built in the 20s. Um, they were built with wood sides. Um, starting in the late 30s or so, the SP started replacing the wood sides on some of the cars with steel. And the steel sided cars in particular lasted very late um, into the 70s. And so we're, we're very often photographed because it was such an antiquated looking car in you know, what was otherwise a you know, fairly modern train for the time. Um, so yeah, we're doing the, the wood sides, we're doing the steel sides. Um, we're doing wood, do wood door or steel door is appropriate. We're doing the two different ends and we're doing the uh, Viking roof and the Murphy radio roof. So uh, just a combination of parts to accurately model a whole group of cars. It's 
scroll down a bit here and uh, yeah. show you some more shots. We've got lots of interesting paint schemes. That's probably one of the most interesting ones, I think. Yeah. yeah so right. quite a few of these cars were converted for use for the SP overnights, which was an LCL express service. And uh, they, uh, there were two actual schemes. This is the, the post-war scheme, and there's also a pre-war scheme, which we'll see further down. But uh, we're doing both. Um, most of the cars just carried whatever the standard SP boxcar red paint job was for the era. Um, so we've got cars that'll from roughly the early 30s to through World War II. We've got cars from uh, shortly after World War II and the 50s, and then cars that lasted from the 50s up, up to the end, um, along with some maintenance of weight cars and along with some that were painted green for passenger service. So it's quite a mix of cars. Yep. And uh, of course, different uh, brake variations depending on uh, on the era. We've got both the KC or the, uh, the AV brakes. Right. Um, and as we as we've done with like the X thirty ones and the, and the MP box cars and so forth, one set will be installed on the car and the other one will be in the uh, in the box. So if somebody wants to either update or backdate their their model as soon as possible. And of course, we have lots of road numbers. I think uh, are we for the most part doing two six packs or one six pack depending on the. Uh, the it's board? actually one six pack per scheme mm -hmm. per version. But that also means that because there's so many different versions, there are like three to six packs for each paint scheme, depending on the version. So it, it, it's going to take a little waiting through to to uh, to make sense of perhaps. But there, there's a there's a lot of options in there. Yeah, and of course this gives us uh, there's so many they have so many cars uh, that 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 gives us lots of opportunity for future releases and, and more. Yeah, I, th I think there was something like 3,500 cars. Or something. Yeah, yeah. And scroll down, we get. Uh, Past all of the uh, box car red and into the. Uh, I know. like box car red. What's wrong with it? Exactly. <laughs> 50 shades of box car red. That's right. Yeah, there's the, the, the green passenger service and then the overnight there at the bottom. That The first one is the pre war overnight, which was a much simpler scheme, and then the post war one that we saw the vendor of. And of course, uh, also some maintenance away cars. Yep, and these lasted well into the seventies. I'm guessing they were probably gone by the uh, by nineteen eighty. I'm not. Sure. I don't know myself, but uh, um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Although there's there's a couple that um, are in museums in California in in the SP gray uh, maintenance away scheme, and uh, they look like they were painted fairly late. Yep. And I can actually share some of, uh, let me share the renders here, just to bring that up on the, on the screen, give it a closer look. We've got two uh, kind of painted renders. And which version, is this the, uh, is this an as delivered version? That's the, the, the B5015, that's the uh, 1950s paint scheme. Okay. There's that's the steel, steel side car. With the with the Viking loop, <clears throat> closer look at the uh, overnight. That's a sixteen. That's got the the, the newer style end on, although in, in black it doesn't show as well as clearly. And the steel doors, steel sides. Full underbody detail. Yep, that's the K brake version. Mm -hmm. There's more. Uh... There's. Yeah, that gives a little bit better idea of the uh, the, the dreadnought end that was on the sixteen version. And keep in mind too; these are are the the initial renders. Uh, so we'll, right. uh, yeah, so <laughs> we're well quick. along on on design, but we're not quite finished yet. So this is yeah. where we're at. Yeah. So they, when when do you think these will be going into tooling? Probably before the end of the year. Uh, we're pretty close. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Some other views there, and these, of course, they would have run pretty much everywhere. Uh, they would yeah. run to Canada, all across the U.S. So uh, they were they were a general service interchange car. They went they did they went over. And there's the AB brake uh, on the body. Yep. Are we doing? Uh, is there multiple types of uh, brake wheel too, uh, or, or is it kind of one style? We're we're doing just the the vertical brake wheel like this. Um, some of the cars were later upgraded with um, more modern, like a, an Ajax style brake housing, but. Uh, uh, we're not offering that in this run. Okay. All right. Excellent. 
Uh, so that's actually, uh, that's a really neat model. Um, they should do very well, especially if you're, well, pretty much if you're modeling anywhere from uh, from the 20s up until the 70s, you will need to have some of those. I, I need a few. You need a few, probably, to go with your uh, your GLAs on the uh, on the layout back there. Right. You can kind of see behind you. <laughs> yeah, you I got, all, got some things to share later. Why do you have a B36 box in the middle of the layout? I don't know. The factory sent me something. <laughs> we'll, we'll open it up later and take a look. All right, so that's uh, that's the uh, the B50, 15, and 16. So the next one is the uh, the N scale auto floods, and again, uh, I think this is another one that's right up Jeremy's alley. So yeah. coal trains through southern Ontario. Yes, yes. You're like a plague. Yeah, exactly. At least it's your scale. Come on. <laughs> yeah, and all we did we we pressed the button to make it smaller. That's how easy yeah. it is to do scale stuff. Yeah, there's, all there's you a, have to do is. There's a big red button, and you just press that button, and it automatically becomes a different scale. Yeah, yeah, or, it's or always that button. easy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here's the N scale auto flood three, uh, just like our HO model. Um, Matt, why don't you take that away? Ah, uh, well, like you said, uh, we just uh, took the HO and shrunk it down. Um, I think everybody, including myself, was just blown away with the HO version of it and talking to the InScale guys, you know, Jeremy, Mohan, Francis, um, even internally, it was a resounding do this car in InScale. So here it is. Um, but uh, it's, it's the road names are a clone of the HO version. Um, you know, details as best we can. Um, of course, some of it's simplified for InScale just due to the sheer size of it. Um, and then in the renders, of course, you see that the uh, uh, coal load is smooth. We will definitely be adding the coal texture to that uh, when it's finalized in the tooling, so no need to worry there. Uh, the coal load is included with the car, uh, so it's not something that you have to go source or anything like that. Um, and then the road names uh, match the HO version, so we've got uh, ENSF, CEFX, um, what was it? G GLFX, GGPX. Um, you got to remember all those, uh, all those, uh, all those yeah. numbers in your head. So, yeah, you know. I know. Uh, <laughs> the goal fix was to get your fix them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the PGNX, the CMO, uh, the K uh, KPLX. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so seven different uh, road names, and there's two special cars. There's the double rotary for the BNSF wedge scheme, and then um, the Indiana Railroad two millionth car load car. Um, so yeah, um, it's it's essentially uh, designed the same as the HO version. So the 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 bottom and the slope sheets are a separate diecast part, so that the sides are flat and they have all the bolt rivet and nut and washer detail and that type of things on it. Um, cut bars, uh, walkway cross uh, crossover platforms on the ends of the car. Um, yeah, yeah, so I mean, it's in scale. It's, it's pretty nice. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and judging by, I mean, the, the, the way the HO one sold, that was probably one of our best selling HO freight cars Ever, I think, in terms of the three orders, it's it's done really, really well. So we know yeah. the, the N scale one will do uh, probably equally as well. So yeah, so you know um, who's buying just one of these though? Yes, yes, you can't buy just one. I need no, one car. Car. Yes, <laughs> it should be twenty five packs. Exactly. Exactly. Well, and I mean, for for you guys, there's the uh, unnumbered versions. So if you want to go cross eyed putting numbers on them, there you go. <laughs> So there's three, there's three six packs with numbers. So you've got 18 numbered cars and then a six pack of unnumbered or however long of a train you desire. So. Excellent. You actually have to do some modeling. Just a little bit, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so that's good stuff. Um, so those are, those are our, two, uh, our two big announcements this month. Um, we got lots more coming up, but uh, that that'll be I uh, guess December. We got some new stuff, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that for now, of course. 
But either way, these are really exciting models, and uh, I think we're, we're kind of going to do pretty well, both of them. So, uh, what do we want to go to next? Maybe we'll do some questions. Let me bring up the uh, list here. Um, got a question about the comets, the HO comets. Uh, have they arrived yet? And actually, I, I believe uh, they are those the ones that arrived this week. Yes, I think they did. We had the HO comets arrive. Uh, they've just landed. Um, and also the Santa Fe B36 dash oven. So those arrived in the warehouse just, I think, yesterday. It's going to take us a little while to get through that whole the pile of things, but there's some other stuff coming in pretty soon too. Uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad uh, F30 flat cars should be here next week. And we also have the SP HOB 100s, B140 box cars. They're also, I think they're also already in Ontario. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff that's going to be landing all at the same time in the next like five to 10 business days. So it, it might take a little while for them to get through everything because our warehouse is going to be overflowing. But uh, those are all shipping out before, probably, probably by the middle of this month or uh, third week of the month, we should have all those out the door. The taxi's gone. We got tons of room now. Yes, we moved the taxi to uh, to Chris Chris Fox's house. Um, I'm not sure if Jason's paying rent on that or not, but uh, <laughs> but that's out of the way, so we've got lots of room in the warehouse for for, for trains. It, 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 you know, it's amazing how we go from several weeks with nothing coming into one week with all the bricks and everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's, it's also interesting too because some of the shipments. And this is this is the problem we're having right now. And I know a lot of this is happening across the industry, but we've had we had shipments that left the factory the first week of August that are showing up now. And then we've had shipments that left at the end of September that are also showing up at the same time. So it's like we, some of them, they, you never know. It's, it's really inconsistent. There's not really much we can do about it, unfortunately. But uh, at least as long as the stuff is arriving and not uh, ending up uh, stolen like we had last week um then that's 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 a good thing to say the least um if anyone didn't hear about them i think that's been around kind of everyone knows about it now but we had our trailer of uh uh it was the Procore ho scale tank cars and some of the n scale fp9s uh they were on their way to a couple of distributors in the states and the trailer got boosted uh with a bunch of other stuff that they were interested in so uh it went missing, but they found the trailer and they only ripped open a couple of boxes and we and we were able to re retrieve that shipment. So that's good news it, to the police. This is what happens when Jason complains about having shipping delays and saying, what could happen now? Yes. Well, <laughs> he, he leaves them way too open-ended. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he probably I, I, I wish we we'd had a security camera inside the thing and seen the look on the guys' faces when they boosted this truck, thinking they just got a whole bunch of TVs or something, and they ended up with pallets and pallets of little trains. Yeah, but uh, fortunately, uh, we we we, uh, we know everyone uh, is is uh, it's a pretty good community out there. So if they showed up anywhere, uh, we're sure someone would uh, would report it pretty quickly. So. We had a whole bunch of people who said they were watching for us. Which is great. Yeah, exactly, and we do appreciate that. So hopefully that's the last time we have to have to deal with that again. So <laughs> let's see what else fate can throw at us. <laughs> stop, stop, Jeremy. <laughs> we don't have these powers. It's okay. What could possibly right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got another question about uh, comet cars, the N scale comet cars this time. Um, whether we're not, or whether or not we're going to re-release them. Um, I'm sure we will. It's a bit too soon so far. I mean, we just had the first release just a, literally about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. So uh, it might be a little bit of a wait, but yeah, we'll, we'll do those again at some point. Um, same with the HO Comets, which are actually just arriving now, but the HO Horizons, uh, mm -hmm. we've been having a lot of people ask for those. So uh, they'll, they'll make a return. We don't know when yet, but they will be, uh, we will be making a return. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's enough of a voice demand on any of our products, we're, we're more than happy to, to rerun after rerun after rerun if the demand is there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Load the product suggestion form and keep requesting it. Yeah, and get exactly. all your friends to do the same. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Vote early, vote often. Yeah. And that's the nice thing that we've got. We're, we're building up this catalog of, uh, of toolings that we can go back and, and do different versions and do reruns and new numbers and uh, keep the factories busy uh, on, 
uh, on an ongoing basis, which is uh, which is good. And I think we'll do one more question, then we'll go to the order deadlines. Um, this is uh, pretty much for anybody. Uh, any chance of U.S. steam? I think we get that question a lot. Uh, a smaller steam, larger steam. I mean, I've got a list of hopes and desires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So do I. No, demo max. No, I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, yeah, I think we'd love to. We, we've got a whole bunch of steam locomotives we have announced that uh, we're very slow on getting out. And I think that's something we need to take a look at and see the, you know, where do we want to go next with this? Do we expand it? And we're getting a lot of requests for U.S. steam. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think, I think we need to. Uh, bring that up in one of our one of the meetings that we have during the week because I mean I actually have some questions behind that mm -hmm. some from some past experience I would like to know some of your guys' experience too so cool. yeah. well, we can do it now Jordan you want to just sign us off and we'll just have a little yeah break. really yeah <laughs> bye everybody <laughs> on that on that bombshell <laughs> Uh, and well, while we're talking about steam and we're talking about order deadlines, let's uh, let's get into the B10. And maybe I'll start with sharing the uh, the latest images that we uh, we just got in earlier this week. That yeah, so the, fa the factory actually did up a complete model with supposedly the correct details and factory paint, which is is unlike anything we've had before. So yep, there we go. We're, There's this we're is definitely a, getting uh, closer. Yeah, so this is the sample they sent us. Uh, this is D101095. And uh, this is uh, this is yours again, Bill. So I'll let you kind of run with that one. Okay, sure. Um, D10 you can see again. The picture, by the way, if you, are you able to see the picture on the screen there? Yes. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, so the D10 again, we're doing, um, it's the second in our, our Steam release. Um, all die cast construction, uh, fully gear drive, uh, driven uh, axles, um, all wheel pickup, uh, locomotive and tender, except for the pilot wheels. Um, we're doing a um, few different detail variations, high headlights, low headlights, a uh, couple different positions for the bells and the uh, uh, feed water piping on the top. Um, and then also we're doing oil fired and coal fired tenders. Um, there are three different running board configurations for the other side of the locomotive, the engineer side, so different brake, brake uh, arrangements over there. Um, and uh, we're very happy now with this sample, finally. It's, it's, we've got one that, that's all together. It runs great. Um, we did a video a couple of weeks ago on a beautiful layout up there. Um, this locomotive is now in UPS land somewhere on its way to me. Uh, for a quick review, and I know that there were some questions, and I got several emails about how many cars it'll pull on a grade. Um, so when I get it here, my layout has uh, one and three quarter percent grade. So I'm just going to load it up, and we'll we'll see what it does. Uh, yeah, for sure. But all the all the initial tests were were pretty good. So this, this will be a good test. We're also doing two different walkway versions, correct? Actually, three different ones. I mean, yeah. Do you have an engineer side? I, I don't know if we did an engineer side shot. Uh, which will be the other side. There you go. Uh, yeah, so the you can see this one has the the walkway that steps up and over the uh, uh, reversing gear. There's also a, a, a straight through walkway um, that we're doing. Uh, the steam pipes down to the cylinders. There are uh, straight pipes. There are these that have a little bit of a kink at the top, sort of an elbow, uh, and then a version without pipes at all. So um, you know each road number has the correct details two different number board configurations to the front the flat one and also the, the, the point of triangle one so. and, uh, and keep in mind this is uh, it is factory painted and assembled but this is also uh, still a pre-production sample so bill you're going to get that you're going to go over with a fine tooth comb and uh and uh, we'll... have fun running around so yeah go. exactly <laughs> have, i think that's all the pictures that we have of that one but uh yeah so that so let me switch over to the to the web page there. It took you one sec. Bill, to confirm the traction tires will be in the box. So we have traction tires available. They will be available with the locomotive. Um, one 
like we did with the Royal Hudson, there'll be a spare, yeah. spare axle, one with and one without, and one will be installed and the other one will be... Because uh, it's a very polarized community about traction tires. It's pro and very against. There's no, eh, it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I I mean, personally speaking, I'm, I'm happy to, to come out on the side of against traction tires, but I also understand the uh, uh, the folks that, that want, yeah. want, you know, want them for a longer train on a, on a tighter radius or steeper hill, so... Um, we've got both options. I'll just switch back to that again one, in one sec here. I reload that page. All what right. we did with the Royal Hudson is we had the, the one with the traction tire installed on the locomotive. Uh, and then the, uh, the blank driver in the, uh, in the bag. And I suspect we'll do the same on this. It's, very, it's the rear axle is very easy to swap out. Two screws in the cover plate, and that's this is the earlier sample we're looking at here. Um, that was before a lot well, that of does show the, that does show the triangular number boards on the front on the top yeah, of yeah. the rubber sample, doesn't it? But there's a different look, uh, view from the front. Photo etch number plates on the front, which are kind of kind of nice looking. Yep, and full uh, full back head detail as well in the cab. Yep, and, and these have the, uh, the the flickering in the. Uh, the firebox? They do. They do. Can you watch the video? Yes. I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to rewatch it. Yes. Uh, and yes, that is on our YouTube channel now. So uh, please go and, uh, and, and have a look at that. Uh, and Jason we really do need to keep Antics, so. And we really do need to keep Jason away from delicate models. So. <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, that, that wasn't acting at the end when uh, it was broken. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got your whole bad after True story. It's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Again, here's all the different versions uh, and paint or paint schemes and, and uh, uh, body versions that we're doing in the first release. Uh, there's different subclasses as well. So you've got the D subclass, the H. Uh, we're not doing every single version of the D10 in this release, but uh, of course, there's always always future runs. It's, it's amazing for, there were so many of these engines and so many detail variations on them through the years that they built them, but uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's no way we could do every one of them. Oh yeah. yeah. And this is this was pretty much the staple kind of <clears throat> uh, small CP steam engine. I mean, they lasted for, for decades and decades and decades, right to the very end. Uh, not the smallest yeah. steam engine CP was running when you had to like the D4s and stuff like that, but the, uh, this, was, this was very, very classic with CP. And, and to our previous discussion about um, U.S. steam, these things are almost at, at, at a very slight squint. They look a lot like a lot of Alco 460s that were built in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and uh, used by various roads here. So I think anybody who, who's into steam and doesn't mind doing some kit bashing and so forth, I think there, there's a lot of potential to, to play with that. Absolutely. And we are doing unlettered versions, so uh, if you if you want to build your own, we do have two versions: either the uh, the low mounted light or the high mounted light. Uh, and this gives you all the parts to do whichever tender version you do, either the oil tender or the coal tender. Uh, and but also comes with the different running boards, so yeah, I, it, yes. uh, it gives you all sorts of options to play. Absolutely. Of course, there's the uh, the Credit Valley. Uh, Excursion engine that's uh, exclusive for uh, Credit Valley Railway Company in, uh, in Streetsville, Mississauga. Well, that's the D10s. Um, that's the first order deadline that is uh, coming up this Monday. So maybe I'll flip that off for a second. We'll move over to the next one, which uh, this is another map project. So another one we could get Jeremy to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, the Procore 5820s. And these you would have actually seen in Barry, probably. Yeah, those would have those would have rolled through every now and then. Yep, for sure. Just not in that scale. No, 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 no. Not, not. <laughs> so hit the debigulator and go and we're then we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, so these are uh, this is the, the uh, Procore 5820. It's a plastic pellet hopper, uh, very common. Um, how, how many of these were built? over the years? Oh, gosh. I mean, 
well into the thousands. Um, but I mean, the funny thing was, is that there wasn't continual um, production on them. They were built in batches. Some yep. were batches of 20, some were batches of 80, some were batches of 140. And they were uh, started as early as uh, November of 78. But then they were just built in chunks um, whenever an order was placed or whenever production at the Procor plant uh, opened up for them. So that's why some of the build dates are all over the place on these things. Mm -hmm. um, and the other so, different versions too. So. Yeah. Um, uh, well, different detail versions, yeah. Um, the uh, uh, outlet gates change specifically for the Essex hybrid cars for the for seed, but um, everything else pretty much had the pneumatic gates for the plastic uh, pellet granules. And then um, as uh, roof uh, hatches wore out and got replaced, they would have a replacement style with uh, stiffeners on them, or they would have the vented late, really late style that is the square boxy looking one. Um, and those all be included in the poly bag with it. So um, you can uh, model to your tastes and, and go from there. Excellent. And these, uh, I mean, these are still everywhere, even though they were built in the seventies, uh, when they started being built in the seventies. I mean, we still see them passing by the office every day in, uh, in groups, three, four, five, six, ten 10 cars at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they're still out there because, like I said, uh, mass production started in late 78. So uh, some of them are only just now getting into the 30 uh, year lifespan, you know, because they were built well into the 80s and even some into the 90s, I think. Um, but <laughs> hard to believe that was 40 years ago now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, You're going to have fun with the artwork with all this build dates, aren't you? Oh, Trust me, um, I've already had a lot of fun with it already um, because the early cars, uh, we um, got enough feedback and thankfully got enough information from uh, some customer input that we got the COTS labels updated and we got the uh, dates and um, yeah. everything else updated for those. So like the, the early car here, the first uh, item number, um, I picked road numbers that would have been estimated January 78, February 78 from the very first build order. So it has the early stencil lettering, it has the extra capacity data on it. Um, and then it has the, the two large uh, COTS labels on it. So this car has been updated as well as the Union Carbide car because they were built at about the same time. And those road numbers selected were um, started in uh, November of should be 78, I think, not 77. Um, but anyway, um, uh, going back to some of the very first cars built. So again, they've got the extra capacity data. They've got the, the stencil reporting marks, stencil numbers, and then the dual um, uh, COTS boxes on on the end there. So And that changed around, I think it was 80. Three thereabouts, they changed to the uh, the new uh, the new cop stencil. Uh, was it that late? I thought it might have been as early as eighty or eighty one. Might have been. I'm not. It could have, I'm not. I'm not an expert on that, but I know it was somewhere around, or somewhere in the early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't have my notes in front of me anymore about it. <laughs> I I honestly have a little chart, but. Uh, you know, as a manufacturer, the cots are always a bit of a minefield in terms of what what style you put on a car because they would last for so so many years with right. just a changed plant panel. Right, and I mean it depends on when it got built, depends on when it got shopped, all that sort of stuff yeah. as to what the standard was at that time. And, now, uh, yeah. and nowadays, it's even changed even more. You've got the, there a lot of cars they don't they don't require them anymore, but some right. rebuilders are still putting them on. It, it right. really depends on who who's repainting the car mm -hmm. so, there of course is the uh that's the 1984 um, uh production run you correct stars. it's got the different cot stencils and uh different detail or different right uh, um, and since that was in the 80s that has dual uh uh unit uh, met, uh weights on it so it's uh, got imperial and metric weight on the for the weight of the car mm -hmm. Um, not 
uh, the reporting mark and the number road numbers are not stencil font anymore. Um, and then it's got uh, more instructions. The the gates are labeled and the instructions are bilingual on the car now. So. And these these would have been everywhere uh, all across the U.S. and Canada, mm -hmm. uh, especially. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to the Union Carbide cars here. Um, these used to go up to uh, there's up in Lindsay. There used to be the Union Carbide plant, and they were pulling those out of there right to the end. To the line, oh, yeah. I guess in 98, 1991, somewhere around there, 92. Okay, and the Union Carbide logo is actually uh, a separately applied uh, photo etched piece, so that will be. Uh, uh, printed on the photo etch and then applied to the car. So that is not going to be printed on the plastic body. So it's going to be a standoff part. Mm -hmm. Nice. Excellent. And of course, we've got later versions too. There's, oh, there's the, uh, the very cool BF Goodrich. Yep. And um, again, from the, the customers who provided some of the COTS era information, um, they helped clarify the information that I originally had that this is an 87 eras car, not a 78 era car. So I uh, got that clarified. So this is 1987 plus was some of the earliest information on BF Goodrich information we got. And of course, we also got the, uh, the 90s, uh, 90s and newer uh, black logo era. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so there's I think there was a low version and a mid version or a mid and a high that we did on this first production run. But there there are three variations of that black logo, low, mid, and a high. And I saved one of them for a subsequent run. So yeah, so we did a low and I think that one's mid right there. So it's and it's just the placement of the Pearl Core logo on the side of the car. That that's it. That's that's what's special about it. <laughs> So just to add some variety to your train. And to make it more interesting, we've got the uh, the uh, UMPX Pro Car cars without the logo. Right, but they have red text. Ooh, variety. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and uh, Dow Chemical. Yep, and uh, the Dow wow. Chemical had a neat little emergency label that you can see that's on a yellow sticker there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, that's that's uh, what from that's from about eighty eight and up. I guess you can see we got that there. Uh, Dow Chemical um, only had one batch of cars, and I think it was either forty or forty five in their production run. And um, yeah, so I guess it would have been eighty eight uh, build date. So. And, and then of course, uh, uh, this is the uh, SX car. Is, is this a former uh, Pro Core car? That's correct. So the S Essex hybrid seed cars, those are all former Procore cars that they're getting patching out. And I uh, thought that I think they're changing the outlet gates on them because, you know, seed is a different has a different uh, unload uh, method than the, the plastic granules do. So. And of course, we've got the uh, conspicuity stripes. If you're if you're modeling that era, this is 2005 plus. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Something for uh, modern models too. Yep. And undecorated, and, of course, we're doing undecks. So. Well, and it's not undecorated in the sense that it's not painted. It is painted and assembled, but it's painted in the base coat gray with no printing on it. So there's no lettering, no painted reporting marks, that type of thing. So it's um, kind of set up for freelance guys if they want to do freelance or if they want to. Uh, um, letter uh, different pro core lettering or, or or artwork placard special versions what have you so or railroads of lies there you go that's what you call them jeremy yep <laughs> i think you're going to trade that mark one or that that uh that trademark that one i should say i'm trying to get it trending <laughs> yes <laughs> That'll be, that'll be a road name, op, not name option on one of our next releases. We should have a product line called the, the Railroad of Lies. Right. <laughs> Make t-shirts with it, too. Yeah. Exactly. Well, while we're here, let's bring up uh, bring up some, some of the photos. We can get a closer look at them. Um, this is the second sample. I, we had two samples, and this is the second one that I sent you, as I recall. Uh, yes. So the pneumatic, um, if you're... 
uh, we're still seeing the website if you change the screen. Oh, sorry, let me, let me bring that over. Thanks. Uh, Zoom is always so helpful. <laughs> Let's try that. Can you see that now? Yeah, so that's the, um, that one has the pneumatic gate, so that would be the Procore version of the car there. Mm -hmm. So scroll through yeah. these. There we go. There's a look at the roof walkways. Mm -hmm. And those are all the as delivered uh, roof hatches on it. So that does not have this uh, style with the stiffeners, or it is not the vented version either. So. Mm -hmm. The underbody there. Yep. And the, the separately applied rods and those pneumatic gates, those are pretty sweet looking. They, it makes the car just stand out that much more. <clears throat> Once again, it looks better upside down sometimes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and once again, this is this is the other order deadline that's coming up this uh, this Monday, November fifteenth. So both that and the D ten um, final final order deadline, we're going to go into production with both of these pretty pretty soon. So we'll be right. sending those numbers uh, up to the factory uh, probably this month or. Uh, Pretty right. Soon. So yeah, like Jordan said, the order deadline for these is the 15th, so Monday, and then that means that once they get into production, they will deliver next year, probably next summer, next fall, something like that. Yeah. 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 All right. So that's uh, that's those two deadlines. Maybe we'll go back to doing uh, doing some questions here, and then we'll look at the December order deadlines. And then we've got we've also got some other stuff that's coming in, and I think Bill's got some stuff to show you over there too. So yeah, we'll see that in a little while. See what the guys sent me. Exactly. Uh, what have we got here? Um, got a question from Matt. Uh, me? What did I ask? I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's about your layout. How uh, what? How tall is your layout? The one behind me. Yeah. Uh think the railhead's supposed to be 48 inches off the ground. Okay, not too bad. <clears throat> what, are you, what are you modeling over there anyways? Is it a grain elevator? Or? Um, it's supposed to be a flood loader for all of the auto floods that I ordered. Um, oh, exactly. So. <laughs> well, that's why you uh, built the car. Okay, now yeah. I got <laughs> Now yeah. you're catching on, Bill. There we go. Yeah, exactly. uh, no, this is part of a modular group that's out of uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, the Gulf Western. And the, uh, there's a third module that goes with this, and this is a uh, a coal flood load scene that'll have staging go back behind the scenic divide, and and uh, it'll connect in with their layout if I can ever finish it. <laughs> uh, but the goal is to get it done for St. Louis Nationals next summer. Fantastic. Excellent. Let's see if there's any more uh, questions I can bring up here. Uh, oh, here's one from, from, uh, from Craig. He wants to know if we're putting snow tires on steam engines. That's, that, that sounds like a Craig thing. Isn't it just past his bedtime? <laughs> uh, isn't it like 4.30 in the afternoon? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he just woke up from his nap. Yeah, I think so. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> Uh, we've got a question about park cars. Do you think we'll ever redo the HO park cars? I don't know. That's a that's a long shot on those. I know we're uh, we're doing some of the other ones right now. The uh, the other Canadian cars. Uh, we've already got a couple of them announced. We might do the park cars one day. Probably not for a while. We've we've done a couple runs of park cars. There's a lot of the cars we haven't done yet, and I think yeah. that we'd rather do those first before mm -hmm. coming back to the park. I think when was the last park car run? Was 2014 or 15? Somewhere in that that range. I couldn't tell you without looking. Yeah. Sounds about right. I'm right, getting some questions about the EP5s. I know Bill, you've been wanting to talk about EP5s. I think. Um, first off, will they have working sanders to go with the working pantographs? <laughs> Moving right along. No, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Actually, hang on. We'll stop production and uh, see if we can incorporate that. It can't take more than another two years. <laughs> yes. And uh, speaking of production, they're actually moving pretty far along with those. Uh, I can actually see if I can dig out some, uh, we might have some photos around here somewhere. Yeah. What, what's, uh, 
I can remember what the, uh, the number is. Of course, they sent me a B36. I didn't order it. Anybody want a B36? Yeah. So you have, uh, do you have one there? Go, go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. Let me see what I do. All right. Well, while I'm, while I'm pulling up some, uh, some photos here. Oh, my. Let me look at that. Oh, very yellow. What's with all the yellow? Yeah, it, 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 well, this is Rick Abramson's favorite scheme, so we did this especially for you. Did that one actually even run in service, or did that uh, didn't that get repainted before it even really ran? Or am I thinking of something else? This this is a production piece, and I'll power the layout up here in a minute. We'll take a look at it. But um, yeah, great story behind this one. Um, when these engines were uh, designed in GE, um, the designer couldn't pick decide between red or yellow for the, the color. So they painted one of each, pulled them out on the test track at GE and uh, Mr. and Mrs. McGinnis from the, the, who was the president and his wife of the New Haven came to look at them and decide which colors. And although they liked the yellow, they th thought that the red would be, uh, was flashier and would uh, um, last better, which obviously it would have. Um, so they rolled this right back to the shop and repainted it red. It never actually got off of the GE plant grounds, but we did. We got a lot of requests to do it, and uh, so we did. Yeah. Can you hold so, that one up for one one second again? There, I just uh, I just uh, I pinned you to the top there so people can have a better look. Very nice, and that's fully operating, right? You're well, yeah, we'll find out. I got, I've got a couple of really nice GLA hoppers we can mm -hmm. tack it onto here. These were pretty common on the O and W, weren't they? You know, absolutely. When the O and W electrified, oh yeah, I gotta walk to the other end. Power up. Yeah, he he's modeling before the O and W electrified. <laughs> it sounds like it's a railroad of lies. <laughs> Are those going to be our shirts for uh, Springfield now? Right, yellow. No, Spring uh, Railroad of Lies. Hashtag Railroad of Lies. Ah, we have the hashtag in there. Yeah. Have to do an event about that. <laughs> hey, it makes noise. I want to see. You can kind of hear it. Oh, trust me, you'll you'll hear it. <laughs> Better graph going up. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 kind of washed out, but we can kind of see it in the just it's yeah, it's, it's blending into your field. So that's hard to believe. So it's going through the startup. Bill, do you think you can move it a little bit to the right? Uh, it's just it's uh, we can't we can't see them over the uh, the field. It's it's blending into your field there. Move it in front of those trees that you have yeah. planted on the scenery. I don't think you can hear us. The other right, huh? Yeah. I can't hear you over this thing. We, we can hear your voice, but we can't hear the engine, so. Ah, good old noise cancellation. Thanks, Zoom. Yeah, yeah it's, it's canceling out the locomotive, but only picking up Bill. There we go. That's a, that's a better image. That looks good. So yes, the EP5s are on dirty track. This is what happens when you're actually building a layout, folks. Um, EP5s are in production, this is a uh, production sample that they sent, um, basically to test out the pantographs and so forth, which you can see work. Uh, very, very excited to finally see this come to life. Detail on the roof here. Again, uh, so the working pantographs, which are operable in DCC. Um, so any of the DCC sound models will have the operable pantographs. Uh, the DC models, uh, they're positionable, uh, positionable only. 
Now, if we can do this in N scale with the operating pantographs. Go away. <laughs> well, I'm saying somebody's going to get a Nobel Prize. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> All right, let me just. Uh... Actually, Jeremy, that'd be a good project for you to get start getting involved in product design. I think I think that's yeah. There we go. Keep me occupied for a bit. Yeah, you, you can take that one and run with it. So. I'll suggest it at Monday's meeting. You can, yeah. Uh, just to give you a couple of more close up uh, images here, we've got some factory photos. So I'm only going to show maybe one or two here, but there we go. There, uh, there's the shells uh, being assembled. So that's, it's coming along. It's been a long time coming, but uh, we're, we're, we're getting there. They're, they're, they're actually in the final stages right now. They're actually just waiting for some uh, some pantograph parts to come in from the drive system from ESU, and then we're uh, we're ready to ship. So yeah. we've actually got a question about the pantographs. Um, will they be difficult to remove if if you want to remove them for whatever reason? Well, uh, there's a couple of the Penn Central units um, did have one of the pantographs removed. Um, not in the version that we're doing, but if somebody wanted to model that. Uh, no, they wouldn't be too difficult to remove. Uh, you, there, there are going to uh, be some openings in the roof you'd have to patch uh, and then just paint black, but uh, certainly something that could be done. As I recall, there was a handful of units that actually lasted very briefly in the Conrail, uh, the, the two that were converted for freight on the uh, on the Northeast Corridor. Uh, they were never, I don't think they were ever repainted or re-stenciled or anything, but they lasted briefly, I think into 77, I believe. 77 or 78 before they were stored. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they 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 were still in the uh, in the black, they never repainted them too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, while we're looking at some photos here, before we get to the other deadlines, we've got a couple of things that uh, a couple of quick updates on other models in production. So I'll quickly share those kind of in the same folder. I think a lot of people will appreciate this. Uh, PAs that shells in the uh, in the paint booth right now. Particularly, I think the New Haven guys might appreciate them. Yep, yep. Uh, these uh, these New Havens or PRs? I guess New Havens. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other shots? I think I might have one more. I can probably share, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Uh, give me one sec here. Ah, there we go. Not the most high resolution shot, but we also have a uh, B unit. So that's one of the reasons we have the ones. So the, yes, the PAs are uh, are starting their way through the process now. Who's that for? That That's Rio Grande, I guess, huh? That's, yep. that's Rio Grande, yeah. yeah. So when do you think we'll be seeing those? Probably later in the winter? Um. Yeah, I don't know that they'll be shipping those much before um, Christmas, January at the earliest. I mean, they've, they've got a lot. It was a big purchase order, and they've got a lot of units to go through. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep up, keep updated in the uh, in the newsletters. Yeah, hopefully, uh, if, if all things go well, maybe we'll have some samples by uh, by Springfield, some factory samples. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll. We'll play that by ear as well. So who knows these days with uh, with shipping and, and whatnot, how long that's going to take. When they leave the factory, when we actually see them, doesn't seem to be. Uh, yes, exactly. Doesn't seem to be a direct correlation. <laughs> All right, so we got through the order deadlines for this month. So I guess it's probably a good idea we uh, we have a look at the. Well, you're talking about stuff in production. These are the. Real quick, the GLA, these are production models, and these are leaving the factory, have left the factory. So, yeah, I think they were leaving this week, as I recall. Yeah. So, these are uh, are coming very, very soon. So, yeah, they, can, uh, they get here. And of course, a classy, classy paint scheme there. Which one's that, the OW? Sure. Well, the second. factory likes schemes like that, nice and simple, Spec. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, let me uh, let me bring up some pictures. We got some uh, production model photos that uh, I can find them here that just came in. Share this on the screen. We got four four different road games that came in. Um, 
this was la uh, last week these samples arrived. So that's the CM GLA hopper. Actually, that, you can see all the features in detail. Lehigh Valley. There's that O and W car. I think Bill's bought most of the release. No, but I have several friends who've helped. <laughs> yes. Get another good shot of the interior. All the room of detail and uh, bracing. Again, it's a die like the Matt's auto for it's a die cast uh, floor with uh, plastic sides on the side, which gives gives you the ability to do all that. Yeah, I was shocked when I picked one up. It didn't. It doesn't look as heavy as it is. Yeah, it, they. Yeah, they. They, and they track beautifully. I'll tell you. Yeah. I've had you know, yeah. the early samples running around here. And yeah, I'm. I'm just imagining these in aluminum paint and a little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> With a yellow stripe on the end. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yep. Yellow, red, BNSF, brown, whatever. <laughs> nice. I don't know. Did BNSF ever get any of these? <laughs> Not those. I'll, I'll see myself out. <laughs> yeah. And there's the PR. So, yeah, they're on the way. Uh, this section. You guys are spoiled lately. Yeah, exactly. Oh uh, yeah, we got the uh, that, this shows the uh, the F thirty flackers kind of you can kind of see it to the right there. Those are the ones that are going to be arriving any day now. Um, and then of course the X thirty one box cars on the left, which uh, which shipped in in October. So great time if you're a if you're a transition modeler uh, in the Northeast, pretty much anywhere. Yeah. And if if you're a Pensy modeler, we do appreciate that this has been a hit on the bank account that we we thank you for. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really shown that the the PR guys. Um, are, are really supportive of uh, what we've been doing. So, yep. And they keep feeding me ideas for new projects. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so those not are, just you. <laughs> so these are these are on the way. I guess we'll leave them this week. We should be seeing those early in the new year. Probably these days, it's hard to say. It could be the end of December. It could be the beginning of January. We could be the end of January. We don't really know. So hopefully it's sooner rather than later on those. <clears throat> Um, so let's go over to the uh, over to the schedule here. So we've got a few more order deadlines that we've announced uh, uh, today in the newsletter. So we've got the turbo liner, the HO turbo liner. Uh, we're pretty much ready for production. We have a sample right now that's being painted. So we're we're looking forward to getting a video uh, by the end of this month. We should have that uh, that video filmed and uh, ready to go. Get some pictures of those as soon as they come along. We've got Santa Fe R56 uh, reefers. I'll bring up some photos of those in just a sec. Uh, the USRA single sheet box cars and the USRA uh, CPR clone box cars. Those are actually in tooling right now. Uh, we haven't seen the samples yet, but uh, oh, did we did we get the samples? It says we received samples. Apparently, we, oh, we no. The, on, on the on the I'm sorry, the the RR56. Yeah, Matt's got it there. Yeah, but on it says uh, we've received samples of the single sheets. No. Yeah, I think the bit, bit, ignore tool, that part. The, the tool the tooling has started, and they they sent tooling photos, but yeah. uh, no samples yet. Yeah, so that shouldn't be too uh, too much longer. Probably maybe by the end of the year we'll see we'll see those. And do we have any other deadlines? I think it's just just those uh, those four. But while we're here, Matt, you want to show the the sample off there? Yeah, he can bring up oh, he, photos there. there and yeah, I've got I've got the photos on the, on my screen. So there's there's the we've actually done some retooling on this. So I'll let Matt kind of explain everything we've done. <clears throat> yeah, there was um, some of the details in the very first uh, tooling samples we got weren't quite what we were hoping for, and so there's some redesign that needed to get done to it and. So that's what caused about the one month, four to six week delay, I guess, on it. Mm -hmm. um, but much happier with it now. Um, uh, the the ends of the car, um, the detail on the ends is much more reflective of the prototype. And then some of the details on the sides, specifically like uh, some of the tack boards and then uh, the grab irons next to the door and then uh, re redid the, the uh, door latches. The separately applied door lashes there um, and they they came out a lot better than we had originally done so overall I'm, I'm happier with it now 
So there's a, there's a good look at the underbody there. Um, so that uh, shows you all the, the separately applied brake rods and everything. Um, lots of lots of pipe detail. Uh, you can see the track, uh, the, the power pickups for the uh, sound system. Right. And uh, on these cars, the floor is what is removable. Um, the cut bars are a friction fit into the body. And so you just uh, gently pry them out of the mounting point on the bodies and swing them out and then the uh, pry the sides of the body apart and the floor comes right out. It's pretty nice. And hopefully we'll have, uh, we're probably gonna have a video about these sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll have that out before the order deadline arrives along with everything else as well. And yeah, the roof looks pretty good. Looks yeah. Nice. yeah. They've also changed the roof walk. Again, this is a pre-production sample, so it's not perfect, but uh, they, they changed the roof walk a little bit, I think, as well. Yeah, um, we changed the way that the roof mount or the roof walk mounts to the body because the way it currently is, you you have the flat roof walk and they have to pry those ends apart and that de deforms it. So we had to um, get creative in the way it mounts to the body and took some of the mounting legs out and got have some really small slots in the roof. So it just sits right down on top of it and they don't have to bend it, deform it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then the, the glue will adhere it to the um, uh, the mounting posts along mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the the ribs on the top. So I like the see through effect by the uh, generator at the end there too. It's yes, nice. you can see the generator in there, all that that nice uh, nice edge detail. That's that's really nice and nicely done, nicely rendered. And of course, you've got the single hatch on the roof, which uh, has its own kind of etched piece uh, itself right under the hatch there. So. These are going to be, especially when we get some, uh, when we see the painted ones. Um, mm -hmm. so this will be probably, would probably have a mid year release, I'm guessing, uh, once we close the deadline at the end of this year. Just, just yeah. approximate. Yeah, and, and there's still uh, uh, some minor tooling refinements that we need to do, like the rivets still need to be added to the sides of the car and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, actually, while well, we're on that, let me bring that, that up there. We have a list of uh, road names. Uh, is this still sharing uh, properly? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, many shades of Santa Fe, which is uh, always a good thing. So, these are the original uh, SFRD uh, 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 named cars or, or lettered cars, and there's quite a few different uh, paint variations. There are lots of these. So, we've done a little bit of everything. All variations on a theme. And some right. of these are, there's multiple series too. So you got the R56s, the 60s, the 61s. Right. And um, I'm not as familiar with this as a couple of the other guys. Like I know Craig is very familiar. He could tell you the differences between the 56, 60, and the 61. But I think externally, they were primarily all the same. It came down to some of the um, uh, accessories and such that were mounted into the car or used on the inside of the car. So externally, they remain the same. And these were originally built, I believe, around 55, 56. And are, I think uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And two, two versions of the paint as well. You've got the, uh, the large uh, uh, Santa Fe, you know, either the smaller Santa Fe or the larger Santa Fe uh, version of the logo there. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's the plug and play uh, soundboard that's uh, available separately if you want to to have the sound. Right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's uh, what Mohan and I have sort of been working on so that I can get your video created for this thing. So we'll get that up uh, hopefully in the next uh, next few weeks. Is going to be that? Craig in the video? What's that? It's going to be a Craig video? I, I, I think so. I mean, he's, he's probably the guy that knows more about them than all of us. So we'll uh, sort that out when, uh, when the time comes. So Craig says the differences are that the class is stenciled with different class numbers. So I guess if they were all the same, just different class numbers. Yeah, exactly. Different build groups, sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think there was also later on they were re, re stenciled with a different uh, with different reporting marks. Um, I can't I don't remember the exact year that was, but sometime in the mid sixties, mid to late sixties, as I recall. Uh, again, I'm not an expert on these, so I don't don't quote me on it, but uh, we, that's a, definitely a possibility for a future run. Um, what else we got? So we got the the other thing is the turbo liner. Um, we've uh, been waiting for the new samples to come for a little while. But like I mentioned before, they are. They're being painted right now, so we should have one before the end of this month, maybe, or the first week of December. We should have a video ready to go on that. So that's being worked on. Um, been a long time coming for this too, but it's uh, obviously pretty exciting. We've got the original, uh, original phase three from 76, 77. We've got the later, uh, the later versions where they, they kind of thinned out the, uh, the striping and painted the roof black. Uh, we've got the phase, uh, uh, space five variation, which uh, it's it's the original RTL one bodies, but we've, we've done that uh, paint scheme because it's it's pretty close. Um, and as much as we'd like to, we'd never be able to sell enough of these to pay for unique tooling for them. But uh, but they're they're going to look really good. And of course the the X two thousand demos, which we actually made uh, we, we sold enough of those to make it uh, make it a thing. So that's that's neat. Demonstrators so, actually, there's 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 quite a following for demo units. Absolutely, absolutely, and of course the add-on coaches. So, especially in the later years, or actually pretty much any time, you could they were typically delivered in five car sets, but they would add an extra car uh, as needed, sometimes two. Um, so uh, we've made those available. Did we do coaches for those demonstrators, or did they not run with coaches? They were actually, it was for the uh, X2000 demonstration tour in, I guess that was what, 92, 93? Mm -hmm. um, they were used to pull around the, was it the, the X2000, is that the uh, Swedish set? I believe. The high speed set that they were testing, demoing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that was in the early 90s. And uh, I, they went back into service and were rebuilt, I think. Uh, for the uh, the rebuild project in the late nineties, they didn't last very long, of course. But. So there weren't really add-on coaches at the time. It was no, no, there was there was no coaches that they ran with. So. Right. right, just power cars. Uh, I think we do have a photo. Yes, so we do have we did get a set. This is the set that's being painted right now. Uh, this was on our test track uh, earlier, kind of middle of uh, middle late, late October. So uh, we uh, we're looking forward to sharing that pretty soon. So there's that, and I think we'll just go over the last batch of order deadlines. Let me uh, switch over to that. So did we, did we sell enough of those turbos so that you can pay Matt Donnelly back? I don't know yet. Um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that, uh, How breaking things, you know? It's... Yeah, exactly. That's hard enough to get in there to to, uh, to 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 research them and to measure things and break them while we're there so yeah. we'll never never be invited back thanks jordan exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the other uh, the other big deadline coming up is the uh, the single sheath usras that's also on the 15th of december um, again with the tooling samples haven't arrived yet but we will uh, we're, we are hoping to have them in a few weeks time if, uh, if they, they're they're working on the tooling now. They were, they sent some photos. They're well along on a lot of the parts, and they're they're promising samples by the end of the month. So, okay. excellent. I'm excited to see this. Yep. And again, we've got lots of uh, lots of different variations. Three types of doors, two different types of brake systems, and the two, diff uh, two different roofs. The, uh, the original roof and the uh, the later. I'm blanking on it now, but uh, Hutchins, I think. Roof. Yep, the Hutchins roof. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. And there you can see all the different oh, yeah. things. We've got we've got Ann Arbor, BNO, uh, Central New Jersey, CNO, CNW, Milwaukee Road, we've got BNH, Main Central, NNW, New York Central. Everybody had these cars, and they were everywhere at the time. PRR with, in different variations with different doors. Yep. Reading. Uh, Richmond, Fred Fredericksburg, and Fredericksburg and Potomac, if you can say that five times fast. RFNP. Of course. Yeah. SP being a different uh, a different wood box car from the one we just announced today. That's the, uh, the 50, 15, 5015. And a deck, of course. 
and all the different variations. And like usual, these are available in six packs and singles. So uh, uh, lots of different road numbers to choose from here. And that's pretty much it. Oh, the, uh, the CPR clones. Let me just go over that really quickly because that's right. a related car. This is very similar. It was a batch of cars that was built. Uh, did CP build them, build them themselves based on the USRE design? Is that what called? I, I believe so. And, and this, yeah, this was one of those people say that, you know, customer uh, suggestions don't count for anything. Well, this is, this was a customer suggestion that actually is more of a slap across the face. It's like, Bill, how come you didn't do the Canadian Pacific ones? Mm -hmm. um, so we did. All it required were new ends and new sides and uh, anyway, uh, new trucks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're doing the Canadian Pacific clone uh, as well. And uh, while we're looking at this, if anybody has any uh, video questions for Jeremy, please uh, throw them in the comments there and we'll, 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 we'll. Mary Minds need to know. Yeah, exactly. So uh, just going back to the, uh, this, the, the C USRA clones for a sec, we do have a few different versions. We've got the early CP, the late CP, and uh, these actually lasted quite late, uh, the uh, company service cars. Um, we've got three different numbers available and they lasted well into the seventies, probably into the late seventies. We don't know exactly when, but, uh, they were one of the photos I believe that we have of the later Canadian Pacific was dated 1980 or 81 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It amazed me how late the, and it, it was an in-service car. It was sitting, it was on a site and getting loaded. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. All right, so let me, let's uh, go back to some questions, I guess. Uh, what do we got here? We need CNR vans. Maybe one day, who knows? It's not really a question, it's more of a statement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you could say there, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we here we get on that. We did them in N scale for Prairie Shadows uh, a few years back. I know Jeremy did a video on that one already. Uh, what else we got here? Let's wait for, let's get some from Bobby here. We get this question a lot. Uh, what about PRR E44s? We've, uh, we've, we, I think we've had that question in most of the live streams for the last few months. The same guy? <laughs> Probably. I'm, I'm going to say probably. Actually, honestly, it's an engine that, that we have gotten a lot of requests for. And then personally, I'd kind of like to see it. So mm -hmm. watch this space. Who knows? Yeah, there, there are. there are. Uh, that, that was Bobby again, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah I think so, probably. <laughs> uh, we've got a question about the, uh, the N scale via F40s. Who wants to tackle that one? When are they coming? When? What's the delay? Right. Well, I guess I'll run with that one then. So there you go. We, uh, we, we, did, we did actually receive the shipment uh, in October. Uh, we, we weren't exactly satisfied with some of, the, <clears throat> some of the mechanical aspects of the models, and we didn't feel comfortable sending those to customers. So the, we told the factory to put a fix together. They're fixing that now. They're arranging a correction, and we don't know exactly when, but we're probably looking at very early winter, maybe January or February. I don't want to say exactly that's when it's going to be, but we will we will get those uh, corrected and, and get them out uh, around that time. Um, we, we do regret having to do this, but uh, it, we didn't want to we didn't want to ship out models that weren't going to be satisfactory for everyone. So they will be coming along though, and we'll, we will be putting updates out probably in the Maybe the next newsletter or the newsletter after that when we when we have a little bit more information about it. As soon as we get more word from the factory in terms of timing, yeah. Definitely. Yep. And, and as soon as we have more room in the newsletters. I think Bobby needs to do more newsletters. I think that's the answer. They do, do more shorter ones. <laughs> oh, you're going to hear about that tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, at the, at the, uh, the group meeting tomorrow at, uh, at 11, so... Sorry, but I'm taking tomorrow off, Bob, sir. Yes. He, he's probably texting Jordan right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my phone's on fire here, so. Uh, um, another bill question. Uh, F30 flat cars, do you know what they will weigh, considering they are die caps? Did we, I'm not sure if we weighed those already, but they are quite heavy. They are quite heavy. Um, and 
the answer is no i don't off the top of my head although we have we we did some simulations when we did the initial tooling i, I just don't remember for sure they're for a flat car they're they're quite heavy and they track beautifully yeah we had uh, we had some of them we were just testing around the uh the office on the test track uh not too long ago so. i had one as the first car of a train going up the, like a 12 car train going up the helix and mm -hmm. uh, which is generally is just a no-no and no problem Right. Oh, uh, the Caprices. Someone's asking about the Caprices. Uh, they're actually in production right now. Um, uh, the order was quite a bit larger than we expected. Uh, the sales were really good. The pre-orders were, were really excellent. So we're, we're it's taking a bit longer than we thought it would, but they are on the way. Um, I don't know when they're going to leave the factory. Maybe probably early in the winter. We're hoping to get them out before uh, before CNY. But they're they're coming along nicely. The last photos I saw, they are they are in the paint shop. Most of the shells are painted. They are assembling the chassis. Uh, and we we sent the final artwork. I think Josh had the final artwork for the box box uh, artwork and everything just uh, last week or this week. So that shouldn't take too long now. Uh, one for Matt. Can you give us any hints on your next project? Probably not. It's HO scale. Yeah, yeah. I, I think actually it's which next project? <laughs> yes, you have you have a few things on the go right now. Yes, I do. Yeah, he's he never it, did winner. So. It has at least four axles. It has Probably. couplers. So yeah, we we know it's got four axles or more or less. Not not less than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Richard and Andy have the. Uh, uh, uh <laughs> stolen me so it might have two axles two axles and it's only that long but boy right <laughs> it's very nicely detailed <laughs> hey wait a minute <laughs> well, here's one we've got too much sp not enough burlington northern and milwaukee road Ooh. <laughs> those are well <laughs> there there you go uh one of my future projects has milwaukee in it there, mm -hmm. that's it. That's all you get. USRA yeah. cars would have Milwaukee in it. There we go. So. Yes. You know, uh, it, it wasn't that long ago, but everybody was saying we have too much New Haven and all we do is Eastern stuff. Now they're saying we have too much SP stuff. You know, just... <laughs> well, and soon it'll be too much Milwaukee stuff. Right, exactly. So <laughs> I don't do something in UP or something. Speaking of, uh, speaking of SP stuff, um, I have the, uh, I do have B100 here. Oh. So these are, I think I mentioned it before, but these are these should be here in a week or two. So there's one for all the SP guys and Amtrak as well. So we've got some Amtrak cars, both versions. Um, not far out. We got a couple people begging for a C415. That's that would be neat, but that would be a that would be a massive undertaking because I don't think any two were alike. Um, <laughs> That's right up our alley then. <laughs> yeah, you've got, I think you've got three different trucks. Is it two or three different trucks, two or three different cabs, multiple hoods? Perfect. Yeah, that'd be neat. Um, That'll be Jeremy's next project after the next project. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, another one for the group, I guess. Well, actually, another mostly for Bill. Uh, whatever happened to the H1B? We, we kind of tease that. Well, you know, the, the uh, that product designer just he doesn't get much done, and he's still just <laughs> behind. And uh, you know, we're trying to ride him a little bit to get it finished, but uh, we'll just have to see. Yeah, we, we've cut him back to 26 projects on the go. No, I know, I did it. Um, yeah, so I'm what else have we got here? I think we're we're kind of uh, we're kind of winding down a bit here, so we'll answer a couple more, and we will maybe call it a night. Actually, we've almost been an hour and a half now, anyway. Yeah. Uh, you like that? Yeah. This flew by. I believe. What have we got? What have we got? That we we would ask Jeremy what videos he's working on, but that would let hit let everybody else know what we're working on. Yeah, that sort of ties right into it. So 
<laughs> I guess I guess what we could say is Jeremy is going to be working on three videos that are very important next month. And that's all we're going to say with yes. that. We're already planning our, our, our three videos for the end of December, but we're not going to tell you anymore. So <laughs> I hardly know anything. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I hardly know anything. No basis. <laughs> That's, oh, I think we lost Bill. Oh no, Bill. I think Bill. Uh, Bill. Bill lost his uh, his signal. Maybe. Maybe I'll let. Maybe if he logs back in, we'll let him back. Anyway, I got more questions for Jeremy. Um, let's let's give you a, a filming oh, question. Um, editing question, actually. What was the uh, the hardest video for you to edit? Ah, uh, wow. That's uh, there's been a few. I've I've I'm thinking up to seventy five videos now. So. Uh, that one we did for the uh, E8 launch, that was pretty, pretty crazy because that was, we were using video clips that were filmed months apart. Uh, Craig shot the scanning and then he shot some more stuff. And then we, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty hectic. Yeah. And that, that was earlier on during, uh, earlier on during COVID when uh, he was having to go back and forth when the museum wasn't open. So yeah. we to make sure someone was there and, the, the the most technically demanding video I think would have been the um the one we did with the Star Wars parody with the RDC versus the bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the RDC flying overhead that that took forever to get that shot right, like twenty five takes just to get the the lighting and oh that was that was crazy. But you know it's uh yeah it's uh it's it's some of them are pretty tough, some of them are fairly easy and. These ones coming up though, those are going to be tough. Those oh, three. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah, are... It's it's uh, it's it's going to be a big deal. This is going to be one of those. Uh, it's going to take you a while to film them. And yeah. You might be in multiple places to film them too. Yes, this will be maybe a some location. Maybe uh, maybe in the office. We'll see. It'll be a globe trotting affair. Yes, absolutely. Have we scheduled a time to talk about those? Um, Next Wednesday, so we, we, we moved our PR meeting, so we're going to do Wednesdays are going to be a, a, a three are going to be our, our, our video meeting. Okay, all right. Which Got that, Craig, good. next Wednesday. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, those are pretty exciting projects, too, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do one more one more question here, and then we will uh, we'll call it a night. It's been almost an hour and a half. Um, we always get this question about RDCs and end scale. That that's that's been like a. I think we get that. That's another one we get like every month. Another one we'd like to do one day, maybe. Same that's same something. guy again. Oh wait a minute, Jeremy's here. It's not Jeremy. It's... <laughs> you can you can uh, you can use that on uh, on your on your on your layout whenever it gets built. So. Any RDCs go through Barry? Oh yeah. Really? They will if you let them. It's I'm pretty sure they did. Railroad my rules. We're, 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 right. we're, uh, I think I think they did more probably more often in the earlier years, but it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. I have to look into that. Yeah, I don't know. I just know I just know they were in Peterborough here, uh, right up until up until 1990, and then it's just been yeah. nothing ever since. So, hey, one more question for you: What was your favorite video? Oh, that's easy. The um, the uh, dis uh, display case. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that was fun. Yeah, that was. <laughs> uh, I think that was one of your first ones, wasn't it? Was that your first video? No, it wasn't. It was first five. Yeah, yeah. five or six. Right. But yeah, that that was the that was the most fun in that one, and it was so simple, it was so stupid. <laughs> but it was actually it, it was really good, and I think that was back at the time when we were we were still basically using you as a warranty technician. Who also yeah. videos once in a while or something like that. That I think was the tipping point mm -hmm. when Jason said, "Okay, you're 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 doing videos now." And because I, yeah, I was doing them sort of when I had time. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah, that's the one that. And, and and for me at the time when I was filming it, I thought it was just a throwaway video. Like, okay, this is dumb. Here you go, enjoy. <laughs> and uh, he phoned me, killing himself laughing <laughs> as soon as I put it up on uh, online. Yeah. You, like, right. My. My favorite from you is still whenever you were talking about in scale. I think it was in scale, and you turned the color down. It's like, no, that's too much character. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. 
the, the viewer mail. Yeah. <laughs> well, the viewer mail. Yeah. yeah. I was That's watching what it that. Was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Like, I don't think it's bad to do another one of those. Those are pretty. <laughs> well, we've got the material. We we have no oh, shirts. Sure. It's, it's funny. The ones we read online, that's the tip of the iceberg. We can't read most of them or a lot of them. <laughs> that's the thing. We get we get probably we're at the point now where we're getting 60, 70 emails, 80 emails a day. Yeah. I, every day it's it's something. There's always there's always some some very colorful emails that we get. Yeah. Uh, most of them are, are overwhelmingly very, very positive, but once in a while, it's just... They get dark. They, they get very dark. And <laughs> it, 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 exactly. So, But it's good for a laugh. So we'll, we'll, we'll use some of those in another... Uh, well, I've still got enough material to do another two or three um, uh, the mean tweets, or what, what do yeah. we call it? Tell us how you really feel, those videos. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 I've still got tons of footage of, of Janet, you... Um, uh, Jason's read a couple that I didn't put in the last one, so yeah, it's yeah. We'll we'll do one as a filler video, but I think you've got like eight videos you're doing in the next month, month and a bit. So yeah, there's a bit of a lull uh, in the next week or two. That yeah, I mean, actually that's a good idea. I could throw one of those together and then throw that up. Sure, works for yeah. me. Yeah. That'll work. All right, and we're uh, we're right on about ninety minutes, so uh, I think maybe a good idea to call it. Uh, call it an evening this has been pretty good um once again if you've uh, if you haven't seen your email go check your email we've got the latest newsletter that went out it's got all the latest announcements order deadlines we've got uh, product arrivals lots of photos it's an interesting newsletter bobby did a, did a did a really good job on this one so um go have a look at that it's in your email box and probably have that on facebook in the next couple of days and get your orders in we've got the the Monday orders deadlines for the uh, the E10 and the uh, the Pro Core 5820, and uh, a whole bunch of other ones come up in December. Um, yeah, I, I took the Pro Core samples down to North Carolina over the weekend to the Sipping and Switching Society's op session, and yeah. everybody down there was very happy with them and very excited to get them. So nice, nice, <clears throat> excellent. Well, I guess on uh, on that note. Um, I think that uh, maybe it's time to call it an evening. So thanks for uh, for joining us. We'll be back again probably next month, maybe this time next month. We'll do a, we'll do an update video and uh, might have some more more stuff to show. So always yeah, always, always. All right. Well, have a uh, have a good evening. We will see you later. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone. See you later, guys. Bye. See you.